Hey, it's Jose. I want to thank you for coming back to join me on my journey to I Am. I grew up in the Jehovah's Witnesses from the time I was five until I was about 19. My mom converted from Roman Catholic. I want to talk today about the narcissism of Jehovah's Witnesses parents. Um, even when they're loving, there's always conditions behind what they do and the expectations seem to be so great. I don't know if this is all Jehovah's Witness parents, but it certainly was mine. So when I was growing up, um, I have three brothers and two are older, one is younger. I'm the middle child, I'm the only girl. Um, and I did get treated differently because of that. In our family, um, our family's, my grandpa, and they were quite misogynistic. And because of it, uh, the women in our family were always trying to um, develop male attributes to be able to be respected. And this carried on in my generation. I did the same thing. I hope that it doesn't pass on but I do know that I'm just becoming aware of my behavior now like my own learned behaviors that I am changing because I don't want to affect people in the way that I was affected so today I'm gonna talk about um, my mom <laughs> again and I'm gonna talk about hypocrisy and how they can use your love for them or their love for you to manipulate you into doing what they believe is right and that they wouldn't necessarily put on to anybody else even though they say they would so i was married young 17, 17 10 days after i turned 17 my mom signed for me to get married that relationship did not last it didn't take me very long to figure out that my husband was an alcoholic i mean it's a, a pretty bad alcoholic like it didn't matter if there was a six pack a 12 pack a 24 pack he was drinking it all that day like it had to be gone and if he passed out, he would get up in the middle of the night and drink. And then he wouldn't go to work the next day. So, like, literally, by the time, like, our relationship wasn't even, we weren't even married two years. And I, I left because I realized that that I would never have anything. I, he'd drink all the money that we had away. He wouldn't go to work. So then we'd be destitute. So I just said that wasn't for me and I left. Went back home and I did some dating. Um... At one point in my early 20s, maybe mid-20s, I dated a woman. And uh, we had, you know, gotten to know each other and mentally we were matching up. I got along with her. Um, but when my mom found out, I got a letter from her. And I have the letter right here. I'm going to read it to you. It is French um, and I have translated it. So, um... I am just actually going to just read you the English translation. I'm sure you don't want to hear me reading French. Okay, so it says, Jose, I love you because I know you, and I know you have very beautiful qualities, and also because you are my daughter, the only one. But despite this, I cannot accept from anyone when things are very wrong. Each makes their own choice, Deuteronomy 30, 19, and 20, and will answer for themselves and will suffer the consequences of their actions. For the moment, you have made a choice that surely will distance us for many reasons. We must continue to speak and to see each other because of your children, who have nothing to do with what is happening, and these are my grandchildren. To summarize the situation, you can bring the children when you are working, and please organize yourself. All dealings will be done at the front door, except if there is an emergency, like with your car issues recently. Also, my telephone is also to be used for emergencies only. When I have the children, always leave me a phone number where you can be reached. Since I am watching the children all weekdays, I will no longer take the children Tuesday night. Nothing will change for Saturday and Sundays except if I have somewhere to go. For the moment, I do not want to and cannot interfere with your personal, personal life. It is too much for me. It breaks my heart. But if one day you decide to straighten up, I will be there for you. I'm waiting for your return. Mom. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Sounds like a really nice letter. Like, you don't even really know what I've done wrong at this point. And it's not until I turn to the back of the page and I see, you know, 
a couple of uh, dictionary references, I guess. One dictionary reference and a Bible reference. So the dictionary reference is homosexual. Form of sexuality in which sexual attraction is directed towards a person of the same sex. And then she quotes the Bible, Genesis 1 and 27. And God created man, dot, 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 male and female. He created them. I guess she, she learned to use the ellipses from the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> All right, so this was really hurtful to me. I ended up, you know, I only dated that woman for about eight months. And then I never did date another woman again. Um, probably because of this, I can't really say. Um, but nonetheless, my mom's only sister is a lesbian. And this was so hurtful to me because, boy, probably, you know, maybe a few years after this, maybe about eight years, I don't know, still, my aunt came to visit my mom like she drove 12 hours to come visit with her girlfriend and my mom welcomed my aunt and her sister girlfriend to sleep at her home mind you she wanted them to sleep in separate bedrooms my aunt just said no they brought their own camper and they slept in their own camper but when she agreed to let my aunt into her home as a homosexual I realized that she was lying when she said, but despite this, I cannot accept from anyone when things are very wrong. Because if anything, my mom hasn't gotten la more lax in her Jehovah's Witnesses belief system. Like she's gotten, her belief system is stronger. She believes it more than ever. And this is just like a slap in the face. It just feels personal. It's hard to t take it, to not take it personally when there's one set of rules for me and another set of rules for everyone else. This wasn't the first time. This was probably, uh, you know, right around the same time as I really started to notice that there was, that I was expected to be like better than everyone else. My brother, like, I, I know that I was a handful. I started doing like the drinking and the smoking probably like before my older brothers even like kind of you know around the same time really but because I was younger it seems like before um and I don't drink that much I'm like a social drinker I I don't have drinks by myself but I do smoke I don't smoke cigarettes but I do smoke and I'm hoping to, you know, like at some point I'll be able, that'll drop off when I figure out what's the cause of the reason why I smoke. Um, there was this lady, Teal Swan, she's like, a, she has her own YouTube channel. And I seen an episode one day about marijuana, about how marijuana, I don't know if you all know, but marijuana, when you smoke marijuana, you never smoke a male plant. Never. You only smoke the female plant. If you're growing marijuana, you want to pull out any male plants that you have because as soon as a male plant impregnates the female plant, the THC just plummets and there's no more effect to your marijuana. It just makes you tired and sleepy. So in that video, Teal Swan explained that marijuana is actually the divine feminine. And when I heard that, it just hit me so hard that that's why I've been smoking marijuana since adolescence. Because as soon as my mom couldn't deal with me anymore, the only feminine person in my life, like the divine feminine in my life, wasn't showing me love in the way that I needed it. She was trying to love the way that she was. Like, I understand that she's on her own journey. I'm not trying to blame her anymore. <laughs> because it's not her fault. I don't even think she knows what she's doing the effect that she has on me or other people. But when I found out about this, I, it just, it just hit me as, okay, I get why I've been doing it. It's actually the energy that I've been craving. And it could have been the energy why I went to try dating women. Like who knows? Like I thought I just, we just clicked in our minds. So that was how it always been for any of the relationships I had with men. It was just, if we can talk and connect in the mind, then, then, maybe something can go further but all right so um yeah so anyways back to that um my brother my brothers they all smoke too I mean 
I'm, I'm not any different than them. But for some reason, my mom was always on my case about my smoking. And she judged me for it. And then it was like, my younger brother, who's like her favorite, he's her baby, right? So she, uh, she, one day she said to me, she said, oh, well, Christian told me that, you know, it's medicine. And I just, I just kind of like inside lost it. I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm glad that now you listen because Christian's telling you that it's medicine. It wasn't the fact that I was telling you that for years and explaining to you how, you know, God created marijuana wasn't Satan. Satan can't create squat. So, but now it's okay. Like if she became to, to, to look at it differently because my brother, uh, like, you know, he was, he was taking, you know, he was making his own and she would help him. She would actually go. And when he'd be, because he had agoraphobia too, which I think is from the religion. Cause my two older brothers who spent less time in the religion don't have the agoraphobia that me and my younger brother do that was subjected to it in the formative years. And so she would, he'd say, oh, I need, you know, some cubes or whatever. And she'd, she'd go and buy the stuff for him and bring it back. And that's like, I started to really get upset because he went away to the Philippines for a month and she took care of his stuff when he was gone. And at this time, it wasn't legal in Canada. It was still illegal. I had a, I had a license. Like I had a, like whatever um, authorization to be a user. And I, w I still didn't get the respect that he was getting because he was explaining to her that it was medication. And uh, that's, that's not the only times that there's been this two-way street for me and them, um, them being anyone else. Um, and when I tried to speak with her, anything that I say, she just argues with me. I'm not allowed to have an opinion, I guess. Um, but I am a very opinionated person. I have a lot to say because I've lived a lot of life to be able to say something. I've made a lot of mistakes. And when you make mistakes, that's when you learn. If you live a perfect life from the time you're born to the time you die, you won't have learned anything here on this plane of existence. This 3D material, we don't even know what it is. But you only learn from your mistakes. I mean, maybe you can learn just from being good. But that's just my opinion. Well, thank you for coming to share with me today about um, the narcissistic uh, things that I've had to deal with with my mom. I feel like I have actually learned that behavior and may have um, inadvertently unleashed that behavior onto my children when they were growing up before I was even aware that I was doing it. Uh, once I realized that everything was energy and I started on um, a different trajectory in my life after a work accident, um, I started to really understand that my responsibility, I guess, towards other people and, and my responsibility to tell the truth to myself um, about who I really am because I had no idea who I was, I was living like a robot life, like just, just taking another step, another step, another step, just keep moving forward. And I mean, that's a good thing to keep moving forward. But when you're doing it like a drone, it's, it's useless. I literally have so much of my life that is just like, I was droning that there's nothing, there's no good memories. There's no, like, cause I was just perf, perf perfunctory, performing, perfunctory, oh, is that even a word? Um, yeah, so now I'm aware and both of my adult children, I'm having to build them up now because straight up my kids are drug addicts, um, like hard drug addicts. And I feel that I played my part in their 
lifestyle choices. I read a lot of information about addiction and I understand that they have to take responsibility for themselves, but I still believe that I played a part in what they did. So I have actually apologized for the part that I played um, or the parts that I've played in, in how their lives are unfolding now. I still have to um, put boundaries up because I, I can't fix their problems now. I can only f work on myself uh, with awareness and hopefully as they see me making better choices, uh, you know, just loving myself more, uh, being kind to myself because in the past I was really hard on myself. Like I always, you know, I actually have to fight against the, the negative thoughts about myself because I'll be like, oh, you know, you did this wrong. You did that wrong. Oh, well, I'm so sorry that I'm not perfect. You know, I have to be like, it's okay. And it's hard because it's a pattern that you actually have to break because your mind does it. And then you have to be aware that you're doing it. And then you have to like change it. You got to like shift it and like shift your perspective. And it's, it's hard and I'm working on it. Sometimes I'm great at it. And sometimes, you know, the old patterns kind of creep back in and I, and I have to again, be aware that they're happening because the emotions take over. And once the emotions take over, it's almost like you go right back to robot. Like the emotions trigger the robot response of the pattern that was set on you. And the awareness is how you break free. Well, that's enough for me today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on my journey again. And um, if any of you have narcissistic parents or are dealing with like a two-way road where some people expect something from you that they don't expect from other people, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'd love to hear where you're coming from, what you've been doing to, to get into a better situation. It's, it's not easy. Um, but I'm there now. And if you'd like to join me on building, you know, building ourselves up, um, to know that we're good, to know that we're loved, to know that we're worthy, to know that we're accepted. So this is Jose. Thank you so much for being with me today and come back again. Please, you, I'd love it if you liked my video and made a comment. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that'd be great. And I love you. Please find the love for yourself in yourself. Have a good day.